You also got to work with uh, Taker. What are your memories of uh, some of the matches you had with Undertaker? <sighs> there was a guy that, um, after I had that match with Batista, where I got busted open, um, Taker pulled me aside at one of the house shows and said, like, you know, keep it up. He would, you know, say, hey, you know, work on this, work on that, maybe maybe start doing this. And then uh, he, he said, uh, I'd like to work with you someday. I think we can make some money together. And then about a week later, he came up and said, did you hear? And I said, no. And he says, we're, we're going to do a program together. We're going to get, they're not sure yet, but they're thinking at least two, maybe three pay-per-views out of it. And uh, I was just, you know, obviously very excited about that. Now let me ask you, I don't want to run your story. Mm -hmm. At what point do you say to yourself, wow, here I am, I, you know, I came up on the Indies and now I'm working with Undertaker on the WWE pay-per-views. I mean, did, ever, did you ever sit back and be like, Wow, how did this happen? Yeah, the first night that uh, we worked together on a house show, um, I don't remember where we were. I have a terrible memory when it comes to dates like that. Matt Hardy can tell you like where he was last week, where he was 10 years ago. He, he's just got like this right. graphic memory when it comes to dates and times and who he wrestled and who... I, I can't remember that stuff. I just remember being in the ring and hearing that gone for the first time and like just... I got goosebumps and I was like, I cannot believe that I'm standing here. Like, huh. You know, how did I? I remember saying to myself, like, how the fuck did you get here? You know, Crazy. And you see the long walk down the ramp, and then and we hadn't we hadn't talked about anything. You know, he just said, you know what? I'll just go out there and call everything, and, and um, I just want to get a feel for you and see see how things go. We came back, and he's like, we can work together, like, um, you know, and tomorrow we'll go out there and. We'll put a little more into it, and we did. We went out there the next night. We called a couple spots beforehand, and then we just started, like you know, adding stuff, taking stuff away. And uh, I worked with him night after night after night after night after night. It was always just, just awesome. And it never got old, you know. It never got like, oh man, I got to work Taker again. You know, it was like bring it on. And uh, and he was very, very instrumental in uh, in helping me out and molding me too. He. Uh, I remember him saying, you know, I, I really like your style, like, and for me, and I, I've received criticism about this, about being jerky in the ring and, like, not being fluid. To me, I hate fluid. I hate it. Like, when you see somebody really fight, uh, they don't always take a flat back bump. Sometimes they go to their ass. Sometimes you get hit on the jaw and you just drop to your ass. Sometimes you fucking fall into the ropes. Sometimes, you know, um, and I did stuff like that with Taker and he would go to grab me and I wouldn't give it to him. Like I would start scrambling or pulling on the ropes or holding onto the ropes or whatever. And then he'd kick me and then I let go and I'm, you know, let him take over. Whereas some guys, uh, and he told me this, he said, keep doing that because it sets you apart. It's different. Um, even like when he would do the leg on, like the leg drop on the apron, guys just lay there, and he you know he sets him up, and then he goes up, takes his long walk, gets up on this on the ring apron, and then he walks down and does a leg drop. Right. Guys just lay there the whole time, and I was like, you know, fuck that. I'm gonna you know and I move around like I was trying to crawl up, whatever, and put a little space between me and the mat so that when he actually did the leg drop, there was a fucking bump. Right. And you know stuff like that. He'd say like. Keep doing that stuff. Keep doing it. He goes, but I'm gonna tell you right now, somewhere along the line, that's gonna screw some guys up. So just be careful. And and it did. <laughs> it did end up screwing up and the wrong guys. So who, who did it screw up? I don't know if you want to talk. Uh, well, I know like Cena hated it, Shawn Michaels hated it, and therefore Triple H hated it, uh, which are three guys not to. You know, you don't want them to not to not like what you do. I'm going to talk about these like guys the coming up. Yeah. So, um, but uh, I always say that um, there was a there was a situation one time where uh, somebody got some heat in the locker room. I'm not going to go into it. It's, it's, That's not, fine. it's irrelevant who it is or whatever, but somebody got some heat in the locker room and, you know, a bunch of guys were talking about it and uh, I joined in, I chimed in, 
and um, Regal pulled me aside and he said, he said, uh, don't get involved in that fucking shit. He's like, you're, you're better than that. He's like, look at Taker, look at Steve, look at those guys that you look up to. They don't get involved in all that petty bullshit backstage. They're nice to just be nice to people. Don't talk shit about people. And you know what? And it, it, and I I'm not that type of person. I don't like talking shit about people, and I don't like you know getting involved in that petty shit. And uh, he was right. And um, I I always say that there are two mountains in the WWE. One mountain you got the Undertaker on top of, and the other mountain you got other guys. And this mountain. The Undertaker is up there saying, throwing ropes down. Come on, guys. The weather's good up here. We can make some money together. If everybody's on the same page, if we all work together and we're all good, then that means that the whole card is good, which means, you know, like I remember watching back in the Attitude Era, like it, it, it was from, you know, that first ding, ding, ding till the last ding, ding, ding. Oh, my God, we'll see you next week. Everybody was good. And um, so Undertaker's on one side throwing ropes down, saying, come on, i got to help you guys out. And he really, like, takes guys under their wings. I was one of them. I was fortunate enough. You know, MVP's another guy. Um, and then on the other side, you got guys throwing boulders down. Like, get the fuck off my mountain. I'm up here. I want to be up here. I'm up here. It's a good analogy. I would rather be remembered as being on Taker's Mountain. And I, I just, you know, and it always goes back to that thing that Jim Cornette said to me the very first day that I was at OVW. If you know of somebody that can help the business out, do everything that you can to try to help them out, try to get them better. And if, uh, you know, if somebody's fucking up, um, rather than, and, and they, if somebody's fucking up, but they have potential and they have talent, Work with them, you know, try to get them to fucking stop doing whatever it is that is bothering you or bothering everybody else. Don't try to hold them down. Don't force them down. Don't bury them. So that's all I got to say about that.